almost every YouTuber, casting metal gets this part wrong, including me up until now. If you're new to metal casting, stick around because the solution is, I think, the easiest and cheapest way to get into metal casting. If you already do metal casting, I'm gonna do a very interesting test you might find enlightening and answer some of the zinc fume concerns that people have been leaving in the comments. So what's the problem? Well, there are plenty of reasons why my metal castings don't turn out as nice as they should. But today, specifically, I'm gonna talk about pouring temperature. That's the temperature the metal is when you pour it into the mold. No, it doesn't just have to be liquid, it actually matters. If you do some reading up on the subject, you'll find the universal internet research outcome of everybody disagreeing. Some people attribute a whole bunch of casting problems to pouring at the wrong temperature, and others, like John Campbell in this gigantic book, say that most of the flaws are caused by poor gating or pouring techniques. Thank you, internet research. I'm even more confused now. To make matters worse, there's no way I can even measure the temperature in my giant propane furnace or any of those propane furnace kits you see. So there's no point in even looking up the proper pouring temperature of all these metals. Unless, of course, your name is Clickspring. And you'd better believe I have a very similar build coming to his thermocouple design that doesn't involve drilling and tapping a carbon rod. So stay tuned for that sometime in the future. So because I can't measure anything, and the burner I built is both rickety and insanely overpowered, I usually end up just overheating the crap out of everything. Could this be why the castings don't look that great? Uh, let's test that. Today, I'm gonna pour three identical molds. The same pattern, this spear, rammed up in the same Petrobon sand in the same way, with the same gating system. I printed all of the parts that I used. Here's a spin trap, tapered sprue, runners, and everything to make sure the gating is identical. I didn't cut nothing. It's all the same distance, same diameter, same, same everything. It's all the same. It's designed to prevent uh, sand getting trapped in there or air entrainment or all those problems. You know what? It doesn't matter. We're going to talk about gating in a future video. Just know every single one is exactly the same. And I'll be using the same metal, ZA12. This is a zinc aluminum alloy. I call it Zamic 12 because that's what Roto Metals calls it. But I won't say that because, you know, internet metal nerds get upset. Just know I tried to eliminate all the variables. It's the same temperature in this garage. I'm wearing the same underwear. We're good. Now this metal melts around 810 degrees. That's like 430-ish Celsius. And the pouring temperature is supposed to be around 930 Fahrenheit. I think that's 500-ish Celsius. You know, that or, or a little lower. But what happens if I screw with that? I'm gonna pour one way too cold, pour one way too hot, and one just right. But wait, I hear you say, didn't you just say you have no way of telling what temperature the metal is inside the furnace? Well, yes, side character I just made up. Thank you for that. Uh, I don't. I have no way of knowing what temperature the thing is. Uh, until now. I just got this electric furnace from Vivor. If you haven't seen these around, here's how they work. Crucible goes on top. You put the metal in there. This is a three kilogram, also comes with a one kilogram. That goes in there, you close the thing. You set the temperature on this screen here. Now, if you're American, try to suppress the rage you feel by needing to use a machine that will only show Celsius. I know it's hard, but you can muscle through it. Then you hit this lower button here and it turns on and starts making some buzzing noises. And then you wait. Come back a little while later and it's up to the right temperature. Imagine that. The benefit of this is if you're fumbling around looking for something like I'm always doing when the metal starts melting uh, and you take an extra five minutes, it doesn't overheat the metal. It just holds it at the right temperature. It comes with some leather gloves that aren't terribly comfortable, but they do work. I don't know why they're red. That's kind of weird. And these little tong things, which you can use to grab, you know, in that groove that's on the side of the crucible, pull it out, pour it. And they hold pretty good. I'm actually kind of surprised how not crap these are, given how inexpensive this stuff is. That's it. You know, literally everything you need, except for the metal and uh, a mold to pour it into. Like it also comes with this little, this little ingot mold that I'm not gonna use anymore. I kind of screwed it up anyway. Maybe jewelers can use this. And it's like super easy to use. Uh, you, you can buy these all over the place, but the cheapest place I found to buy it is the Vivor website, not Amazon. If you scroll down, uh, you'll see, I'll put some links in, down below and also a 5% like coupon code. So it's even cheaper. So check it out. If I was new, like getting into metal casting, I probably would skip the propane thing for now and start with an electric one. You can get those propane ones even cheaper, but they don't come with propane, you know, and you can't really control the temperature with those. You might think three kilograms is kind of tiny, uh, but keep in mind, this aluminum bronze spear is under one kilogram. If you add in that aluminum bronze hammer, it's still less than two kilograms. 
you know, combined. How much do you really need? Hmm? You probably don't need a crucible big enough to wear on your head. Ha! Okay, on to the test. Get this out of my way. I poured one too cold, just about as soon as the, the metal was convincingly liquid. It'll pass through a stage where it's kind of in between. I waited till like it was liquid and no hotter. Uh, and problems showed up immediately. I, I didn't think that it took any metal at all. I thought like, oh, this will be interesting to look at. You'll have the same problem if you forget to cut the gates between the runner and the mold itself. Then there, now on a too hot. And I don't mean I overshot the pouring temperature by a little bit. I mean I overshot it by 500 degrees. You know, much more, and the liquid zinc would literally boil. Like, the crucible's glowing orange at the bottom. Not that you could see it, because they had a big spotlight on the thing. And the camera's like, no, I don't want to see that. But trust me, if you were here, you would definitely see it glowing. And you don't have to when you're doing zinc. Now, those of you worried about zinc fumes, yes, zinc fumes are poisonous. Breathe them in, and you're going to have a very bad time. But this uh, didn't fume. So zinc boils at like 1665 degrees, and that's something in Celsius. Brass, which contains zinc, pours at like 2,000 degrees. You know, and if you're welding galvanized steel, like zinc-coated galvanized steel, that's like thousands of degrees hotter yet. Of course the zinc boils off. But this wasn't doing any of that. Now I'm not saying like a little bit wasn't coming off. You shouldn't just stick your face in there and take a whiff, but I didn't see any visible smoke. I didn't have this place super well ventilated, and I didn't get sick. What that tells me is Zamic uh, shouldn't poison you unless you're doing it really wrong. Like, you need some ventilation if you're running, like, a propane furnace or for this sand, because it, it kind of smokes, it's oil bonded. So you need some ventilation anyway, and that should be fine if you're casting this, these zinc alloys at the proper temperature and not overheating them too much. If you're melting brass, you're definitely going to get a lot of poisonous fumes. And if you're, like, welding galvanized steel, why? Why are you doing that? What's wrong with you? That's not a good idea. Don't do that. You're going to make Jody cry. Is that what you want? Uh, anyways, back to the test. When I poured it too hot, a whole bunch of metal started pouring out one of the vents. A vent that I cut with a TIG filler rod, like a wire. So it was hot enough that it ran through all those long skinny runners, up, up this long skinny spear point, and then all the way out a wire-sized vent to like erupt like a volcano on the top. One thing higher temperatures obviously does is it makes the metal more runny. Hot oil flows better, hot butter flows better, hotter metal flows better, all right? So if you're doing something that's like long and skinny, with like thin sections, you probably want to pour it hotter just so it stays liquid to run through that. Predictably, the normal temperature pour was uneventful. Nothing happened. Okay, so let's check out these castings. This one was too cold. You can kind of see it just ran to the end there. You know what? It didn't quite make it to the spin trap. It didn't quite make it through the runner into the spear mold. You can kind of see the characteristic rounded end, like it was losing viscosity and starting to ball up. Now, to be fair, I did make an exceptionally long, skinny runner, and this is a long, flat, like, pattern. So the metal had to go through a lot, then into this, and then through quite a lot to get to the tip. Uh, it's almost like I wanted to test that. And before you go saying that the runner was too small, remember this aluminum bronze spear? Yeah, it looks like, it looks terrible right now. My bad, I'll clean it up. It filled this whole spear and this whole big, chonkin' thing through, through a gate the exact size of a quarter inch copper pipe. That little opening filled this whole thing. So clearly you don't need a giant two inch runner for everything, especially the small stuff. Now the two hot casting. It actually filled everything. You can see some of the vents. It filled the vents. This is, I think this, one of these vents is the one that just poured out the top like crazy. And look, so this metal had to go down this skinny tapered sprue along that skinny, skinny runner through this little in gate here, and then all the way up this wire to pour out onto the top. That is some fluid metal. You can also see some issues. There's a lot of flashing going on kind of around. Uh, this metal would have been really flowy. It also seems, although I can't quite focus, that some of the metal uh, might have entrapped some sand, especially there. Like the metal would have hit the bottom of this with a little more force, and that's just a whole bunch of trapped sand in there. Uh, but it, it flowed through the whole thing, and I don't see any gaping holes in it, so that's nice. I think the spin trap here might have acted like a feeder, so I probably should have had that further away, but this is, this is quite sunken in. And if you compare it to the just right casting, there's far less shrinkage. I, I, I didn't clean this one up, my bad. This is the one I poured last. I'm pinched for time. So it looks like pouring at a less burning hot temperature, you don't get as much shrinkage. You also don't get these uh, erupting onto the surface. That one, that one barely started going into the vent. There's also much less flashing, although there is some. And the other interesting thing, this is the just right casting. It's really hard to get this shiny stuff to focus. You can see those grooves that are in the pattern, the long grooves. 
where the the two hot one you you can you can make out the grooves but they're not they don't show up quite as cleanly the surface finish isn't quite as good probably because the metal is so flowy it conforms to every sand grain a lot easier but with the just right one we didn't have as much shrinkage on this and it still filled the whole mold clearly the right temperature is the right temperature right but the big surprise for me is that the too hot one isn't riddled with holes or cracks or anything of that nature so maybe maybe gating matters a little more although temperature obviously does matter so other metals might have different problems when they pour too hot i use this zinc alloy because i have some of it but also because i can pour it way too hot without without causing other problems not related to the metal like if you really overheat brass or bronze for example it can actually ruin the sand right because the temperature is too high uh, i'm not testing the sand i want to test the metal my takeaway here uh, is that campbell is probably right that the pouring and gating probably causes more of the flaws but also that you should pour hot enough to fill the mold all the way and probably no hotter than that or you'll have other problems the good news is with this electric furnace i can run tests like this and then i can change the temperature and i can run other, run other tests see what happens it's kind of like dialing a new 3d printer filament except way more intense check out the links down below uh, see you next time Thank you.